Hi, I'm Sherman Rowland with Highland Park, and in our webinar tonight, we're going to be going through the shaping machine. And I'll be taking you step by step, what is the shaping machine, how does it work? I know many of you have been looking at it, kind of curious about it, because it's the only machine like this out on the market. I'll give you a little bit of the history of how we came up with it, and how John and I really out of using similar machines um, in China really came to seeing the need of doing a machine like this one. The shape of the machine, I'll just simply put, uh, there's the shape of the machine right there. It's essentially, you can think about it like a rock lathe, if you will. You can take a stone and you can take a, a cam. In this case, you can see there's a little cam here. Uh, actually, you can't quite see that in this video. Um, but um, there's a cam that's located right there on the right hand side that you can put on and that will allow you to replicate a shape uh, using that cam. Um, but that's not the only way the machine can work. Um, so let me just back up a little bit, explain the overall function of the machine, what the main components are. The top part here, this is the head. We call this the head. It's this essentially a lot of the business portion of the machine. Um, on the left hand side is where you put your cam on. There's a, that's held on with a bolt. And, uh, and I, when you go to put on the cam, you don't want to tighten that up too tight. And you also want to make sure when you put that bolt in, and I'll show you essentially what it is by taking this apart. Um, it's a little um, eight millimeter, I think it's an M8 bolt. Um, uh, or M6, I think it's M8 though. Um, it just screws into the end, and the cam itself, it's got a little slot in it, so you can see that kind of, you know, goes on two little, uh, um, almost like pins. Um, and when you put this on, you want to make sure that you get it going and hand started. You don't want to force it. If you force it, you can damage it. Um, but that's, that's the cam part of it. You'll see below there, this is called the lifter, and essentially what this does, that scales the head up and down. Um, this is the clamping mechanism right here. This handle on the right hand side, I'll show you this handle there. If I go and I turn this counterclockwise, it's going to unclamp. And you'll see that when I tighten this up, um, moving this out of the way, when I tighten that up, that's what clamps it. Uh, so that's your clamp. And what's in here are these are phenolic pins, which is a replaceable material. They're really cheap. Um, and those press into these adapters. Um, you'll see underneath there is your main wheel. This is your arbor. That's connected to a motor underneath, which I'll show you just a minute. Um, the right hand here, this is the side shift. And the, what the side shift does is allows me to do a cross feed. So you can see I'm moving that to the right and the left. So as you're using your wheels, your wheels, plated wheels are going to wear out at some point in time. Um, and so with this, you can adjust the position of where you're grinding so you can really make use of the full wheel. That also allows you to center the piece over top of the wheel. And, and the wheels can be moved left or right through the use of flanges. It ships with two flanges. Um, so depending on the width of the wheel, you'll use one two, or two flanges or even perhaps no flanges if you've got a really wide wheel on there. Um, you know, if we close the hood down here, it, I, a lot of times through our demo, I'll be running this with the head open, but it, you know, it does have a hood that closes. Super badass kind of, uh, I don't know, I think about this as like Jules Verne, you know, 10,000 leagues under the sea or whatever, this really cool riveted, these are actually screws going in there. It looks cool, do we need that many screws? Probably not, but we thought it was really cool. So that's what we did. Um, for those of you that may not know John and myself, we're um, both muscle car freaks. We've built lots of bracket racing. Drag racing was a big thing for us growing up. So when we started building machines, we really wanted to build them equally cool and kind of that 1950s, 60s, built to last, built uh, with no BS in it. And that's really what we focus on with our machines. Um, this machine here on the front, I'll show you some of the other controls. This is your speed control. This controls the rotational speed of your slab right here. Um, this is your on off for this here. This is your main power on and off. This handle here raises and lowers the head. So you can see, and you can't hear it, but there's a micro switch in there. And when I lower the head, the head motor engages and coolant starts flowing. So this machine's designed to be changing out uh, wheels. 
I mean, ch changing out slabs really for production cutting. You can do, you know, readily 2,000 pieces a day on a machine like this. Uh, we run three of these in our factory. Um, super badass in terms of output. The bottom is the tank. And when I pull the tank out, you'll see there's a pump here. This pump supplies this here. There's a separate, a second pump bracket in there, and that's for use with an Everclean. So say if you wanted to mount an Everclean on the side, which we would recommend because this generates a lot of sludge, that Everclean mounts on the left side of the unit there. On the website, you'll see I have pictures shown what it looks like with an Everclean. Now, one of the things that I also will mention, um, if you get one of these units, check to see the space between the pump some of the pumps are, uh, we've noticed are a little bit longer and I just removed the screws to make sure that it's not pressing against the bottom of the tank. We did have a, uh, a change there and that might have affected some of the folks that have older units. So pay attention that a new pump is not pressing all the way against the bottom of the tank. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you just a couple other things before we go into this. On the right hand side, if I pop this cover off, you'll see there's a motor. It's got a one horsepower motor in there. That goes, belt goes up to the arbor on this side. On the other side of the unit is the lifter mechanism. And if we pop it open, you'll see that's where that lifter mechanism is. So when I lower and lift, there's a micro switch right down here. And then that lifter right there, which is going to lower and lift. So it's really slick. And you'll note there's this tube in the back here. This is for ventilation. It's a four inch vent on the back. Um, our customers in Europe um, and also uh, production shops here that really want to keep a clean shop, this does generate some mist. So ventilating out to like a Harbor Freight dust collector outside it can be really useful. So you'll see this machine the production trim saw also has a vent on the back of it as well. So you're drawing everything in. Um, really makes for a nice environment, although we don't do it internally here, but we definitely have customers that do that. So with that, let's kind of queue up for talking about how do you begin to do your preform pieces that you would then be shaping on the shaping machine.